Uh, I'd like to recognize a, a gentlewoman from Virginia, Ms. McClellan. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, uh, Mr. Director, Senator Nelson. Um, I actually am going to start with a question from my 13-year-old son uh, who wants to be an astronomer, who is a big fan of the great observatories. Uh, he looks at, uses uh, images from Hubble, um, Spitzer, and even the now deorbited uh, Compton um, telescopes. But he wants me to ask you specifically about Chandra, the, the X-ray um, telescope that under the current budget proposal uh, looks like will be, could be ending. And he's very concerned, as I know a number of astronomers are, that this could leave a, a blind spot in the collection of uh, X-ray information in the future. So can you assure my 13-year-old son, Jackson, that NASA is still committed to uh, X-ray images in space and the data that you collect uh, in that way? Um, earlier, I had talked about how the compromises that you all had to make, which are certainly understandable, caused 24 and 25 to have less money. In science, uh, just in 24, it's a billion dollar cut. And so you have to make uh, some choices. Chandra has been phenomenally successful. But we have new missions that are coming on. Uh, we're going to keep it going as much as we can. Uh, you just can't sustain it at the previous funding levels. And so uh, we are having a senior review during this year uh, to get community impact on alternative operational scenarios for Chandra and the Hubble Space Telescope as well to move to a more cost-effective way. Uh, I can't spend for NASA money that we don't have. I understand that. I understand that. And I think, uh, I think that, that question that I just asked is an example of how important it is that uh, NASA makes science fun and exciting for kids because, again, the images that he has seen from these telescopes have gotten him more interested and fascinated in, in STEM uh, subjects in school than anything else that his father and I could have done. May I point out that Chandra is 25 years old and it's having operational issues with regard to thermal problems. No. So we're going to keep it going as much as we can, but we have to lessen the funding. And, and I understand that. Um, but could you speak to uh, the some of NASA's programs that are focused on our younger students, particularly during the summer and time they spend out of school uh, so that we can uh, get more students as passionate about uh, space and science as my son is? Well, for example, the discoveries that we're having with the James Webb Space Telescope is just phenomenal. Uh, every day, almost, it seems like there's a new discovery. If he's particularly uh, interested in the far reaches of this uh, universe, uh, it's not too long. We're already discovering other planets with that. Uh, the ones that we've found thus far are gaseous, but we've got another mission coming that your son, as he grows up and stays interested in this, is going to be interesting, and it's called the Nancy Grace Roman Space Telescope, followed by Habitable Worlds Space Telescope in the 2040s. We're going to be able to find other stony planets that are just the right distance from a medium-sized star that has carbon and uh, water on them. And lo and behold, that's beginning to be another planet like planet Earth. I mean, there's so many uh, possibilities out there. Thank you. And, and going to more college students, can you talk about how NASA's budget will continue to support partnerships with uh, HBCUs and increase outreach efforts to students who are currently underrepresented in the STEM fields? 
we specifically reach out to HBCUs and other minority institutions. In the grants that we give out, we make sure that we do that. And a, an example I gave early in the hearing is that, for example, we give grants to rural universities and colleges that otherwise might not, uh, a student there might not have uh, the opportunity of receiving uh, a grant like that. So we're trying as hard as we can to distribute it across the country. Thank you. I yield back. 